Dr. Chris, and today I'm reacting to the Luana Carolina knee injury at UFC Fight Island 2. Your knee does not appreciate negative degrees of knee extension. Luana Carolina, professional mixed martial artist and UFC fighter, and her recent knee injury help us to understand why. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. If you are a new subscriber to my channel, then thank you for becoming a part of the Intern Army. Welcome to my channel, where I explain orthopedics and sports medicine in a way that's easy to understand for everybody. Today, I'm talking about Luana Carolina and the injury she sustained on July 18, 2020 at the UFC Fight Island 2 event in Abu Dhabi. This event occurred in the flyweight matchup between the Brazilian fighter Luana and her countryman, Ariana Lipsky. The two were scheduled for a three round fight in the event. Luana, a Muay Thai specialist with a record of six and one, was pitted as the minus 100 underdog against the minus 120 favorite Lipsky, the queen of violence, a striker with a record of 12 and five. With both of them being striking specialists, you could be forgiven if you thought this fight would be decided by strikes or kicks. Let me assure you that this was not the case. The fight ended within the first two minutes of the first round, likely before they even started breathing hard. After only a few exchanges in the first 30 seconds of the fight, Lipsky countered Carolina with a body blow as Carolina threw a low kick. Carolina, who was off balance, fell to the canvas and was immediately pounced on by Lipsky. This was the beginning of the end for Carolina. As Lipsky was sitting on Carolina's chest, attempting to not give up her back, she grabbed Carolina's left leg. With Carolina's left thigh trapped between Lipsky's thighs, Lipsky realized that she could attempt a knee bar from this position. Lipsky used both hands to extend Carolina's leg using her torso as the fulcrum or the bending point around which to straighten the leg. The results are a bit, shall we say, disconcerting. Lipsky submitted Carolina by knee bar, extending Carolina's knee approximately 20 degrees past its normal endpoint. Bazinga! Carolina's screams could tell you that this was not a pleasant experience and that there was a real possibility of serious injury. Carolina was unable to stand for the decision after the fight, and she was also unable to walk when leaving the flash forum and had to be carried out of the arena. Following the fight, Carolina's manager, Lucas Lepkis, posted that the x-rays had not revealed any fractures, but that an MRI in Brazil upon her return home was pending. Given the degree to which her knee was bent, I would be very surprised if she didn't have at least some minor to moderate ligament injuries to her knee. So what happened to Luana Carolina in the submission? What are the injuries that she likely suffered? How will she be treated if she has suffered serious injury? And what will come next with Carolina? Luana was submitted with a knee bar that forced her knee into hyperextension. The knee is a hinge joint whose primary range of motion is flexion and extension, or bending and straightening. Although small amounts of other movements are possible at the knee, its main plane of movement is in the sagittal plane. For most people, the normal range of motion is between 130 degrees of flexion, or bending, and minus five degrees of extension, or straightening, otherwise known as hyperextension. In some people with an anatomical variation called recurvatum, even more hyperextension is possible, sometimes as much as 10 degrees. Unfortunately, 20 degrees of hyperextension is abnormal for everyone, even these people. This amount of hyperextension at the knee can cause a few problems, well, actually more than a few. Let me explain. Stability of any joint is determined by two types of factors, static and dynamic. Static factors include the shape of the bones and the ligaments, while the dynamic factors include the muscles around the joint. When the joint is moved this far outside of its normal range, the stability of the joint is compromised at the level of the bone, the ligament, or the muscles. So far, as of the day following the match, x-rays have ruled out an injury to the bones. 
MRI will determine whether any soft tissue injuries have occurred. So what soft tissue injuries can we expect? Hyperextension mechanisms are typically associated with injuries to the cruciate ligaments. These are two of the major ligaments of the knee that cross in the middle of the knee, the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. Although both are commonly injured during knee hyperextension, the mechanism of injury of each is slightly different. The ACL is generally injured by high compressive forces in the front of the knee. These likely produce anterior tibial subluxation, which results in excessive tension in the ACL. Enough of that, bam, ACL rupture. The PCL on the other hand, is likely due to excessive extension of the joint stretching of the structures at the back of the knee. Once you pass their limit of stretch, you have earned yourself a PCL tear. So it is likely that Carolina has suffered injuries to one, if not both of these ligaments. However, depending on the exact extent of stretch and whether or not any rotation was involved, she may have also injured additional stabilizing structures such as the posterolateral corner, the posteromedial corner, the joint capsule, or attachments from the popliteus or the biceps femoris muscles. Given the mechanisms seen on the screen, I would guess that posterior capsular structures were also involved as well. Of course, there is also the possibility that meniscal structures in the knee were additionally injured, but this will only be confirmed once the MRI has been completed. Carolina reported that she felt three pops in her leg during the knee bar, so this just might be telling. So how will these injuries be treated if they are present? If Carolina has suffered only a mild injury to these ligamentous or capsular structures where they are only slightly stretched but not torn, otherwise known as a grade one injury, Carolina will be able to be treated non-operatively and she will be able to start rehabilitating her knee almost immediately. However, should she have suffered a more severe soft tissue injury where these structures have been partially or fully torn, grade two or three injuries, then she will likely require surgical repair or reconstruction of the affected structures. Depending on what has been torn, this may occur in a single step or as staged procedures. I suspect that if surgery is required, a staged approach will be performed as both cruciate ligaments and posterior capsular structures are likely involved. When many structures are damaged, it becomes difficult to fix them all within a single setting in a reasonable amount of time. The involved procedures will depend on the structures involved, but could include an ACL reconstruction, a PCL reconstruction, or repair if a peel-off injury, a capsular repair, a posteromedial repair, or a posterolateral reconstruction. Additional procedures could be included if there are injuries to meniscal structures or the articular cartilage. Although the injury mechanism is different, I suspect that her constellation of injuries will be comparable to those suffered by Thiago Santos in his fight against John Jones at UFC 239. Hopefully, her injuries are limited in scope. Otherwise, an extended layoff and a significant amount of rehabilitation are in the future for Carolina. If we assume that she has injuries to one or both of her cruciates and structures of the posterior capsule, then it is likely that she will be out of commission for at least one year as she rehabilitates herself following surgery. If her injuries are only minor in nature, it is possible that we might see her back within as little as three to four months. I'll definitely be keeping my eye on the situation to see exactly how this situation plays itself out. And I will definitely be keeping my fingers crossed for Carolina, hoping that her injuries are limited in nature and that her recovery is speedy. If you enjoy what I do and the information that I provide, then you can support me by either becoming a member of this channel or by checking out my Patreon page where you will be able to access additional content and to interact with me more closely. YouTube doesn't seem to like injuries and my videos are often demonetized. If you enjoy podcasts and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my new podcast channel. The link will be down in the description below. If you're looking for exercises and workouts, or you want more information on injury prevention, be sure to check us out on our sister channel on YouTube, Q2.0. Thanks for watching, and as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.